Hey, my name is Hubwood and welcome to today's video in which we will take a closer look at the brand new Asus VivoBook S15 with a brand new Tiger Lake i7 processor. If you like this content, make sure to leave a like or subscribe to the channel for more reviews, gaming benchmarks and general hardware related stuff. The VivoBook series starts around $500 to $600, but I've paid €1050 Euros for this unit, which I consider a bit too much. The more exclusive and more expensive counterpart would be the ZenBook line by Asus. Now let's have a look at the technical details first. This thin and light notebook comes with an i7 1165G7 including the new Iris XE graphics unit. 16GB of DDR4, 3200MHz RAM, which is soldered and can't be expanded but should be enough for a while if you don't plan on stuff like 4K video editing. A 512GB NVMe SSD, a 15-inch IPS screen, an illuminated keyboard, a 50Wh battery, wireless LAN 6, Bluetooth 5 and some pretty nice Harman Kardon Sonic Master speakers. The exact model ID for this unit is S533EABQ003T. The notebook is built very firm with a sleek and subtle design in a full metal aluminium body with a height of only 1.6 cm and a weight of only 1.8 kg. It will also be available in multiple colors like red, green or white as well. This unit's color is called Indie Black by the way. I have to say I really like the build quality, it looks very valuable, but the material is also kinda sensitive to fingerprints on the other hand. The notebook seems to be pretty small for a 15 inch unit due to its screen to body ratio. Reminded me of a 14 inch Asus Rift 3. Opening the screen requires two hands if that is important for you to know. The screen doesn't flex a lot and it feels very sturdy. The 15 inch 60Hz monitor comes with a matte Full HD screen that offers 250 nits with an sRGB coverage of 100% according to ASUS and 45% NTSC coverage. It offers some really good viewing angles but should be brighter in my opinion. I wouldn't really recommend buying it for outside usage. And by the way this is the maximum angle at which you can open the monitor. The keyboard and the touchpad are both pretty average. Not great, but not bad either, even though I personally prefer higher keys as the ones built in this notebook. But I like the highlighted enter key, that really helps as it's one of those really small ones. And it has a dedicated numpad, which at least for me is very important. The touchpad doesn't provide standalone buttons, but has a decent click sensitivity. On the right side we have two USB 2.0 ports and a microSD card reader. On the left side we do have the power plug, an HDMI port, USB 3.2 and USB-C 3.2 with Thunderbolt 4.0 support and power delivery as well as an audio jack. By the way this is what the integrated camera looks like and what the microphone sounds like. The Harman Kardon speakers are actually really great for such a small laptop. They can get really loud with a clear sound which I didn't expect, even though they are at the bottom of the laptop. I've tested the battery with 50% brightness and the energy saving mode, which got me a battery time of 5 hours and 45 minutes when watching YouTube. When gaming you get around 70 to 120 minutes depending on what you play, but be aware that performance will drop as well. So mobile gaming would only work for really light games. It can be recharged to 60% in around 50 minutes or by 40% in around 30 minutes and it offers some battery saving mode in which the battery will only re recharge to 60 or 80% if you mainly use it plugged in. The 4 core 8 threads R7 processor in this unit is able to draw a constant 28 watt which allowed some good consistent Cinebench scores. While using the performance mode with enhanced fan speeds it was thermal throttling though pretty fast to around 3300 MHz on all cores with resulting in around 75 to 80 degrees with a room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius. The noise level is really acceptable even at full fan speed on the load. In idle or light tasks you barely hear the notebook and the fans often shut down completely. 
In the first Cinebench R20 run I was achieving a pretty high score of 2215. After 20 minutes it was still getting 2105 points, which is more than other laptops with the CPU can achieve according to notebookjack.com and is therefore more than expected. In Cinebench R15 the first run scored up to 940 points and consistent runs after a few minutes achieved around 840 points. Of course, up-to-date AMD mobile CPUs at the same price range will achieve higher scores though, but at least Asus tried to get the most out of this CPU. Underworlding was not possible as it seems Intel is unfortunately no longer providing its extreme tuning utility for newer CPUs. That is indeed very very sad. Throttle stop didn't work as well and you can't underworld the CPU via the BIOS menu as well. The 16GB DDR4 run pretty fast with around 42GB reading capability per second and they are running in dual channel with relatively slow timings of 22 by 22 by 22 by 48 The Intel SSD was providing around 1600MB of reading and 900MB of writing speed. That's not slow compared to regular SATA SSD but nowadays many laptops use faster SSDs than this. But you won't notice that in daily usage. The notebook starts pretty fast and apps and games, including very demanding ones, loaded and started super fast. Please be aware that there are no additional Zeta hard drive slots or M.2 slots. PC Mark 10 scored pretty decent 4969 points, which is considered to be at the higher end of similar laptops according to notebookcheck.com so it actually delivers a great overall performance for all everyday tasks and beyond that. The 3 Mark Firestrike score was up to 3640 points with a graphics score of 4000 and a physics score of 13900. I will provide some more info about gaming with these laptops at the end of the video. The Intel Iris Xe graphics unit was able to keep a stable 1300 MHz core clock and a RAM clock of 3200 MHz. According to GPU Z, it is utilizing 12 to 13 watt under load. It is able to achieve a bandwidth of 38.4 GB per second with a bus width of 128 bit. Now the new Intel Iris Xe that is included in those Tiger Lake CPUs can actually provide enough performance for some lighter gaming. In the case of this laptop, it's somewhere between the Vega 6 and 8 of the Ryzen 4000 mobile series and an Nvidia MX350. With faster RAM, it could be even faster than what you can see here. Red Dead Redemption 2 ran basically fine with a mix of low and some medium graphic options. With an average frame rate of 36 FPS and a 1% low of 24, the game is considered to be playable and it doesn't look that bad. Thanks to the i7 and the 16GB of RAM frame times are stable and you have a relatively smooth gaming experience. With Fortnite I saw an average of 62 FPS on 720p with low settings and epic view distance. It's playable, it's not perfect, but it's playable. League of Legends can achieve 88 FPS on average at 1080p with ultra settings. A mobile like that is just perfectly playable on this notebook. And FIFA 2020 ran with an average of 53 FPS at 1080p with medium settings. It's perfectly playable that way and looking good at the same time. I've actually made an extended clip in which I've tested 31 games and some extended clips on a list of assorted games. I will post the link in the description, but keep in mind that most games make more sense at 720p or 900p. And be aware that the Intel drivers are pretty new and many games have bugs yet and a performance below what should be possible for this chip. So driver updates will hopefully come soon and often. As a conclusion I have to say that overall I really like this light and thin laptop. It's pretty silent and has enough gaming power for some light casual gaming and even some work related light stuff like Full HD video editing or CAD and other software. And the build quality is just great. Intel finally managed to offer an entry level GPU that can compete with AMD's Vega 6 and 8. For my personal taste the display should be a bit brighter though and I found the price a little too high, but maybe you could find a good deal on Black Week or around Christmas. If you like this content, make sure to leave a like or subscribe to the channel for more reviews, gaming benchmarks and general hardware related stuff.
Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye and tschüss.